more than 200,000 people. The vast scale of this disaster was a brutal indication of the power of megathrust earthquakes. And it's given urgency to finding out why these quakes happen all around the ring of fire. Once again, the Alaskan landscape is the perfect geological laboratory. So we're headed to a seismic station in south central Alaska near the tip of the Kenai Peninsula. Millions of years of the Ring of Fire's volcanic activity and rippling earthquakes have given Alaska an incredibly rugged landscape. It's not easy to find a flat spot to land. It's clear on my side. High on the hillside lies West's seismic station, protected under the yellow cover from the elements and the local bears. So this is the vault where one of our seismic stations lives. This is one of the many seismic stations that dot the state of Alaska. Several thousand seismic stations like this exist, all the way from Alaska down to California. And this whole system together monitors any kind of seismic activity, any sort of earthquakes throughout this whole area. It's part of a whole network on all of the volcanoes around here, on the mainland, and throughout this whole area. So the seismic data can be used not only to judge the severity of the earthquake, or the, the magnitude, but also when taken across a number of stations to pinpoint the location of that earthquake. In Alaska, we're looking at about 1,500 earthquakes every month. And you take all of those together and you start to see patterns. They, they map out a ribbon of earthquake activity that follows all along the coast. This ribbon of earthquake activity extends all around the ring of fire. But it is what scientists can see below the surface that is most revealing. If you look at it from the side, you see that actually the earthquakes that are happening close to the ocean tend to be shallow, but as you go inland, they're deeper. And they create this dipping feature that uh, starts out uh, in the ocean and then dips down beneath the continent. This giant dipping feature provides conclusive evidence for how the megathrust earthquakes are generated. The earthquake epicenters exactly follow the path taken by the seafloor as it moves down underneath the volcanoes. Earthquakes are triggered as the rocks slide past each other down into the earth. It is this subduction of the seafloor beneath the land which creates the ring of fire's lethal megathrust quakes and builds its explosive stratovolcanoes. So all of these observations, the volcanoes, the line of seismic activity, the big earthquakes at the interface, all of those are part of one system. They all tie together and are interrelated. The investigation into why the ring of fire is prone to such lethal earthquakes reveals a raised shoreline, evidence that the ring of fire suffers the most violent megathrust earthquakes. And seismic data shows that these killer quakes are caused by subduction, the movement of the seabed, which also builds the ring of fire's giant volcanoes. To discover exactly where this awesome process of subduction occurs, oceanographers search for the deepest and most inaccessible places on the entire planet. The journey to understand why the Pacific Ring of Fire is so volatile has revealed the critical role of subduction, which pushes the seabed deep down into the earth. In Alaska's Prince William Sound, investigators search for where the seafloor is vanishing below the land. There are um, ridges, outcrops, canyons, gullies, um, mountains underwater 
And so the ability to make a continuous map of the seafloor and get a full picture of it gives you the ability to understand how the seafloor is put together and what it has to do with the way the Earth functions. Reynolds is using high-tech echo sounding technology to monitor the exact depth of the seafloor. A sound wave is sent from beneath the ship. The time it takes to reach the seafloor and return gives an accurate reading of depth. Reynolds research shows that all around the Alaskan coast, the seabed is relatively shallow. But farther out towards the open ocean, the readings change dramatically. So in general, around the world, when you go out from land, you cross over a relatively flat shelf down the slope and into the deep ocean basin, which is very flat. But around the ring of fire, as you go out from land, across the shelf, down the slope, instead of going directly into a flat ocean basin, you go across a very deep trench. These trenches are the deepest areas on the planet. And the one around Alaska reaches approximately 21,000 feet. These giant features are called subduction trenches. The largest are deep enough to swallow all of Mount Everest. They mark the exact spot where the seafloor disappears down into the earth. The process that jolts the land in megathrust earthquakes and forms the volcanoes that make the Ring of Fire so dangerous. The Ring of Fire is named for these volcanoes that circle the Pacific Ocean. But offshore of the volcanoes, wherever you have a chain of volcanoes, you also have one of these deep ocean trenches. The location and shape of the Ring of Fire is determined not by its famous volcanoes, but by the position of these deep subduction trenches miles out in the ocean. And by mapping the location of all the trenches in the Pacific Ocean, scientists have made a further, even more significant discovery. High-tech imaging has made it possible for scientists to visualize the Earth drained of its oceans. This reveals that these deep trenches outline the edge of a giant rock slab, or plate, that makes up the entire floor of the Pacific Ocean. This huge Pacific plate is one of 14 plates which cover the entire surface of the planet. Subduction occurs where this plate rubs against one of its neighbors, producing the line of volcanoes which extends all around the Pacific. But the investigation isn't finished. Experts journey to Tiger Mountain in Washington State to figure out how such huge plates can be shifted against each other. GPS that you use to drive around can tell you where you're at on a city block or on a street within a meter or so. But in geology, we're interested in centimeter to millimeter accuracy so that we can track the changing of the land. It's much more subtle. High on the mountainside, Flake has set up a GPS marker point. Here we are on Tiger Mountain. This is our GPS unit. What we have is these metal rods going into solid bedrock, cemented in so that there's no motion. This GPS antenna allows us to measure point positions per day of where this spot is. A network of these GPS antennas across North America provides evidence for the monumental forces which power the Ring of Fire. This is just a single antenna. There's hundreds all across the Western United States to give us a better picture of what's going on with the ground surface. By combining all the data of these GPS, we're able to see that North America is actually moving. The entire continent is moving westwards at about three inches per year. This movement is possible because the Earth's crust rides upon a hot, soft layer of rock called the mantle. Well, the mantle is so hot and it's such a high pressure and the temperature is hotter as you get towards the center of the earth. That's gonna want to move out and convect just like a boiling pot of water. And so it creates a convection current coming up to the surface which then drags along those plates on top. 
These phenomenal convection currents force the Pacific Plate into its neighbors, driving the process of subduction. As the plates get dragged by the mantle convection currents, they impede upon other plates. One has to give, so one dives down underneath another, and then the trapped water from its ocean sediment escapes and melts the upper lying mantle, and that creates hot magma that rises to the surface and creates the volcanoes that form around the ring of fire. The investigation into the forces that drive the ring of fire has now found subduction trenches that reveal the shape of the entire Pacific plate and GPS data providing evidence for the convection currents which force this giant plate against its neighbors. It is this movement of the entire Pacific plate and the resulting subduction of the seafloor down the trenches that shapes and builds the ring of fire. But one final mystery remains. Vast sections of the seafloor are constantly being destroyed. But despite millions of years of subduction down these trenches, the planet's seafloors have never been eradicated. The geology detectives can now reveal why. All around the ring of fire, enormous volcanoes dot a landscape warped by violent earthquakes. Geologists could only assume one thing. Somewhere far out in the ocean, volcanic activity must be creating new seafloor rocks, replacing those destroyed here during subduction. Beginning in 1977, a series of expeditions set out to investigate where this occurred. Scientists realized that if volcanic activity was constructing new seabed, the surrounding water should be warm. The Alvin submersible was equipped with high-tech sensors to discover where this warm water existed. To begin with, the crew searched the seafloor without any luck. But then they hit the jackpot. A column of rock pumping out superheated water. This is a black smoker. Measurements of the water around these features have found temperatures in excess of 750 degrees Fahrenheit. This heat comes from magma welling up from inside the planet. It was a discovery that provided the evidence the scientists needed. These volcanic marvels mark the location of giant features called mid-ocean ridges. At these ridges on the bottom of the ocean, powerful convection currents in the mantle separate Earth's plates, allowing lava to spill out onto the seabed. New oceanic crust is constantly being formed out on the mid-ocean ridges. That crust moves away from those ridges toward the edge of the continents where we're located now. In this way, the seafloor is constantly renewed, replacing material destroyed by subduction at the edges of the ocean. These mid-ocean ridges exist at the bottom of every ocean on Earth. They provide a never-ending supply of new rock, keeping alive the entire plate tectonic cycle. Well, this is a planetary scale process. This is the, the planet itself circulating and the rock and the magma from deep inside the earth welling up to the surface forming this crust and then that crust dives back down into the earth at the subduction zones at the trenches and it, it's mixed back into the solid earth so great is the power driving this system that experts see no end to the constant movement of plates around the planet the forces involved with plate tectonics caused by the heating from the inner core of the Earth is so astronomical that there is nothing that will stop it. It seems like uh, the ring of fire will go on for some period of time. It looks as if we've been having subduction here underneath southern Alaska on the order of 200 million years. And uh, it looks like it, uh, there, there's no evidence that's going to stop anytime soon. But over the coming billions of years, the ongoing movement of plates will redraw the map of the world. 
the Pacific plate is moving and things on it uh, ride with uh, the plates that are being subducted. So for example, the Hawaiian Islands are moving up here to Alaska. Uh, parts of California are moving up here to Alaska. Baja, California is moving north here to Alaska. So apparently Alaska is a popular place to be. It'll be the uh, resting place of all these things. So the map of the Pacific will slowly change, driven by the immense force of subduction. This is the real story of the Ring of Fire. Subduction creates the magma plumes which build the region's explosive volcanoes. Subduction powers the violent megathrust earthquakes that shake the region, leveling whole cities in seconds and causing killer tsunamis. This process of subduction just releases an enormous amount of energy through both uh, earthquakes, through building these mountains, through volcanoes. It's just uh, really inconceivably huge. This is what makes the Ring of Fire the most geologically active and most deadly place on the entire planet. You see the whole picture of creation and destruction of a plate in the Pacific Ocean. And the ring of fire is the boundary of that cycle, and it's the place where all the destruction is happening. Geology detectives have now pieced together the evidence for what makes the ring of fire so dangerous and discovered what powers it. Violent eruptions of explosive blocky lava build the Ring of Fire's famous volcanoes. Mixed rocks from the seafloor found miles inland are evidence for the process of subduction that builds the volcanoes. Raised shorelines are evidence for giant megathrust earthquakes caused deep underground by subduction. And GPS plots provide evidence for the immense convection currents deep in the earth which drive the entire system. These giant forces have built the ring of fire. The energy that drives this whole convective system is really without parallel on the earth. There's nothing else that we can compare to as far as the amount of energy and the force that moves the continents around, compresses them against one another, drags one down beneath the other. Really just awesome. Scientists have warned that a major tectonic shift at Yellowstone supervolcano will spark a massive eruption that will devastate the planet. As the world's volcanoes begin to wake up, experts have turned their attention to the unusual activity going on at Yellowstone. Reports of increased activity above and below the surface at the U.S. supervolcano has set off alarm bells for those who are monitoring the site for a potential eruption. Multiple earthquakes at the National Park followed by a fourth eruption of its usually dormant geyser has led to speculation about the world's largest supervolcano. The supervolcano sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire which is responsible for earthquakes and volcanic activity along the Pacific Ocean, most recently including Hawaii and Indonesia. The geyser steamboat, which had been dormant since 2014, suddenly erupted on March 15th, April 19th, April 27th, and May 4th. Now, according to Fox News, a swarm of more than 200 earthquakes struck Yellowstone over two weeks, which indicated a shifting of the major tectonic plates beneath the Earth's surface. A Fox reporter said two out of three warning signs of an imminent eruption has caused panic among visitors to the site. Those warning signs include increased seismic activity in an increased gas outlet at the surface. While seismic activity in gas outlet has increased during 2018, this has not been to a significant extent and without any sign of ground deformation. Seismologists admit that an eruption could cause mass destruction, but experts at the National Earthquake Information Center in Golden have played down fears. Harley Benz, a U.S. Geological Survey seismologist who monitors the site, said locals would have plenty of warning time, adding that it could be several weeks or months before it erupted. Quote, it would just get more and more intense in terms of seismic activity. So if it's going into an eruptive phase, 
we would likely know way ahead of time. The increased activity has also set off fears for the 800 mile chain of 13 volcanoes in the nearby vicinity along the west coast. Liz Wisby, a geologist at the U.S. Geological Survey, Cascades Volcano Observatory said, quote, there's lots of anxiety out there. They see destruction and people get nervous. Michael Polin, head scientist at the USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory in Washington State, said a major quake was not on its way. He explained, people tend to focus on the possibility of a huge eruption. When they do happen, they're going to shake the region pretty severely, so people should be prepared for that. When the supervolcano next erupts, the expected consequences will see ash devastate the majority of the U.S. according to live science. What do you think? Is an imminent eruption at Yellowstone coming in the near future? And are these scientists just feeding us a bunch of bull? Leave your comments below this video. Thanks for watching.
So here is a new article talking about the recent seismic activity that's going on in Yellowstone. Now, some people think that this could lead to an eruption in 2016. Over the past week, our planet has been hit by large earthquake after large earthquake. And according to Volcano Discovery, there are 38 volcanoes around the world that are erupting right now. We have seen a dramatic spike in global seismic activity that is unlike anything that we have seen in ages. And that is why what is going on at Yellowstone is so incredibly alarming. Geologists tell us that a full-blown eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would have up to 2,000 times the power of the Mount St. Helens volcanic eruption of 1980, and approximately two-thirds of the country would immediately become uninhabitable. As you'll see in the video down below, which I'll give you a link to, there are signs that something big is getting ready to happen at Yellowstone, and if it does erupt, all of our lives will be permanently changed forever. Now, in this video, it appears to be bright as day, even though it is the middle of the night. You can see a whole host of geysers steaming violently, and Old Faithful just keeps going off over and over. Now, this stunning footage was posted by a YouTube user known as Cat Martin, and this was in 2016. And the following is what she had to say about the video that she just saw. There are places steaming that I have never seen steam before. And also note that the bright ground is back. There are no shadows, so it is not from above. As you know, the cameras were frozen up last night, so we could not see what was going on, or so we thought. But I did find a way. Somehow, but just don't ask me how. I did manage to get the Geyser Observation Study Site, which also captured the entire night with no freeze-ups and cutting in and out. So how is that? Anyway... I got it and slowed it down so you can see it a lot better. And as you can see, Old Faithful had weird seismos last night and was going off constantly. But it wasn't just that one night. The weird activity at Yellowstone has continued, and you can watch even more recent footage on Cat Martin's YouTube channel. So what does this mean? I don't know, but watching that footage definitely got my attention. And it is interesting to note that just a few weeks ago, the Shoshone River changed color and started boiling without any warning whatsoever. Now, the Shoshone River, which is near Yellowstone National Park, suddenly and without warning started boiling, changed color, and began to emit a sulfuric odor on March 25th. Nearby witnesses wondered if they were all going to die. Now, the current consensus among geologists and other experts is that a portion of the Shoshone River began to boil, located near Cody, Wyoming, and a new Yellowstone event has opened up. The Boiling River near Yellowstone runs just east of Yellowstone National Park. It is close enough to the park and supervolcano to be a canary in a coal mine, as it relates to unusual geothermic events. The event was initially recorded by Dewey Vanderhoff, a photographer who spotted the Shoshone River near Yellowstone boiling and noted other bizarre features in the river. When a river located above a supervolcano that could wipe out most of the country starts boiling, you would think that would make headline news all over the nation, but it didn't. It would be exceedingly difficult to overstate the potential danger that Yellowstone possesses to the United States. Other than an extremely large asteroid or meteor, it is hard to imagine any natural disaster that would pose a greater threat. Now, the following comes from an excellent article by Steve Elwert. The Yellowstone caldera, or cauldron, sits on top of North America's largest volcanic field. 400 miles under the Earth's surface is a magma hotspot that reaches up to just 30 miles below ground level before spreading out over an area of 300 miles across three states. While most scientists believe the probability of a major eruption is very small, there are signs that have some analysts worried, and most agree the volcano holds catastrophic potential. It could blast 240 cubic miles of ash, rocks, and lava into the atmosphere, rendering about two-thirds of the nation immediately uninhabitable, according to some estimates, and plunge the world into a nuclear winter. That certainly does not sound good. And as I mentioned above, volcanic activity all over the planet is rising. 38 volcanoes are erupting at the moment, and it seems like we hear about another new eruption almost every day. But let us hope that Yellowstone does not erupt anytime soon. There are approximately 3,000 earthquakes in the area around Yellowstone every single year, so it is a very active region. 
In the event of a full-scale eruption of Yellowstone, virtually the entire northwest United States will be completely destroyed. Basically, everything within a 100-mile radius would be immediately killed. Salt Lake City would literally be toast, and almost everyone and everything in Denver would be dead in short order. Further away, volcanic ash would rain down continually for weeks. Those foolish enough to step outside would quickly discover that the ash turns into a substance similar to cement in the lungs, and many would die from suffocation. The amount of volcanic ash released by Yellowstone would be almost unimaginable. In fact, it has been estimated that a full-blown eruption would dump a layer of volcanic ash that is at least 10 feet deep, up to 1,000 miles away. Food production in America would be almost totally wiped out, and the volcanic winter that would result from a Yellowstone eruption would dramatically cool the planet. Some have projected that global temperatures would decline by up to 20 degrees. In the end, the death, famine, and destruction that we would experience would be vastly greater than anything that we have ever seen in the history of Western civilization. So yes, there is a reason to be concerned that weird stuff is going on at Yellowstone right now. Let us just hope and pray that we do not see an eruption in 2016 or any time soon. So I will leave a link to this article in the description of this video. There's also an embedded video that actually shows a time-lapse video about the whole seismic activity and all the steam coming out from these areas in Yellowstone. So do check it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a thumbs up on this video, and I'll see you guys next time.